everybody. So <laughs> let me start uh, presentation. Uh, so today's talk uh, will be in processing methods for error classification. And yeah, this is the um, main references uh, for this slide. And to begin with, uh, let me start why fairness in AI is important. Um, uh, so far, both um, AI models have been developed uh, focusing on overall performance. Uh, for example, in um, object detection, uh, recently YOLO V8 has a great performance, and in speech recognition, Wave 2 back 2.0 has very nice performance. However, um, since now, several criticism has been raised uh, about ethical issues of AI, uh, for example, including the fairness of AI. So one example is a famous um, example in uh, 2016, uh, which is the Compass Recidivism Assessment Tool Software. And this was uh, reported in 2016 uh, to work adversely to African-American people. So, uh, for example, uh, if you see uh, in this table, um, the rate of African-American who was labeled uh, with higher recidivism risk but didn't uh, open, offend it again was 44.9%, 40, uh, 40, uh, which was about uh, twice higher than uh, that of white people. Um, also, the uh, rate of white people uh, was labeled uh, lower risk, but um, didn't uh, did be offended. Was um, was also twice the rate of American African American people. And uh, another example of unfairness in AI is that uh, is the uh, Twitter automatic image cropping algorithm um, uh, that was reported in 2020 uh, to prefer the faces of white people over the faces of African-American people. So uh, many researchers discussed um, the fairness, unfairness of AI and uh, based on um, many um, fairness criteria, uh, which will be um, introduced um, from next slide. So uh, one example of fairness criteria is demographic parity, uh, which means a prediction rate should be similar across um, groups of different sensitive attributes uh, such as age or gender. So uh, this is mathematically expressed as, uh, like this. Um, S, large S means the sensitive attribute and Y hat means the uh, predicted um, uh, result. So uh, regardless, of, regardless of the sensitive attributes, the uh, result prediction results should be um, similar in rate. So um, this uh, criteria, the criterion uh, doesn't uh, consider whether each individual uh, is qualified for the positive result. Um, one example of this uh, criterion is that uh, colleges in the uh, US and in many developed countries uh, try to uh, balance the uh, rate of male and female acceptance rate. And uh, another criterion is this broad impact, which is uh, concept conceptually very similar to demographic parity, but it compares the ratio between um, prediction rates rather than the difference. And um, this is another, um, one example is the uh, companies in the US are uh, by regulation, uh, by regulation, they should follow the four fifth group, which is that, uh, which uh, requires that the selection rate for any group should be no less than 80% of the selection of um, rates of groups with the highest, highest rate. And another uh, criterion is equal opportunity, which, which means uh, prediction rate should be similar across groups, given that the individuals are qualified for the positive results. So this is expressed like, uh, it's medically expressed like this, um, where uh, Y is the um, 
or a ground truth label, uh, which means um, whether an individual is qual qualified or not. So um, it, it compares the true positive rate of demographic growth. And uh, one example uh, of this criterion is that um, companies should uh, hire applicants who meet the conditions of employment at a similar rate um, across um, sensitive um, attribute groups. Um, also, there is uh, one criterion, uh, equalized thought, which means that prediction rate should be similar across groups in um, both cases. Uh, first, uh, the first requirement is that the same as equal opportunity, and another requirement is that uh, individuals are um, the rate, rate should be the same uh, for the individuals who are not qualified. And um, compared compared to equal opportunity, it, it is more uh, more strict in that it requires for both both uh, true positive rate and uh, false negative rate becoming uh, equal across um, across the groups. And there is uh, one another criteria called disparate uh, mistreatment, uh, which means groups of different uh, sensitive attributes should have the same misclassification rate, and it is expressed in uh, different, in, in many uh, forms um, shown below. So, uh, so there are many measures of disparate measurement, uh, mistreatment, for example, the or this classification rate and false positive, false positive rate, uh, false negative rate, and uh, false omission rate and false discovery rate. Uh, there is an uh, uh, compared to previous uh, criteria, there is uh, another criterion called individual fairness. Uh, it um, it assesses the uh, fairness. Uh, in individual level than uh, group level. So uh, this, uh, the definition is that uh, individuals with similar properties uh, with respect to a given task uh, should be treated similarly. Um, so this is the um, formal definition of uh, individual fairness. So, um, so the small, small d x y means the um, similarity between uh, individuals with, with respect to uh, a given task and the uh, large D, uh, this means the, um, the uh, this similarity between uh, probability outcomes. So if the uh, test specific properties are similar uh, between two individuals, then the outcome probability should be also similar. Um, finally, there is a counterfactual fairness, which requires that individuals uh, should should not be treated differently when only the sensitive attributes uh, and its its descendant uh, descend, its descend, uh, descendants are changed. So, uh, mathematical expression is like that, and there are also many uh, other fairness criteria which are not necessarily compatible to each other. And uh, it is important to choose um, some proper criteria in um, each given situation. And next, um, I will introduce um, some various uh, methods for um, fair classification. Um, so far, there has been um, many um, there are models, uh, many approaches to improve the appearance of, um, of AI models. So, and these are uh, generally fall into three types, uh, depending on whether uh, uh, where the modification occurs in, um, in the process. So uh, for pre-processing method, the um, modification occurs in the input data level. So, it devices the data set before training. And <coughs> in processing method, 
certifies the training process so uh, so that it um, removes the uh, bias of the model. And finally, post-processing models uh, modify the prediction output, um, which is um, uh, prediction output to improve the variance metric. <coughs> and uh, for in-processing variance method, these are uh, classified like this. Uh, it is generally um, uh, they are generally fall into explicit or implicit method. The explicit method uh, explicitly modifies the objective function, while uh, implicit method uh, devices the uh, represent, uh, hidden representation uh, to induce the fair prediction. And explicit met method, uh, for explicit method, there are regularization method and constraint optimization method. And for implicit method, we have contrastive learning, disintegral representative learning, and adversary training method. So these five um, various methods will be briefly introduced in uh, from the next um, uh, first, first one is regularization method. Uh, in this method, um, we add a regularizer, regular, regularizer R um, to the loss function to reduce the correlation between the sensitive attribute and the prediction, prediction uh, result. So it is met, um, mathematical expression is like this. Uh, here, um, large L is the um, originally, uh, original um, object, objective, and the second term is the ordinary regularization term. The final one is the fair regularization. One example of this is the prejudice, prejudice, prejudice removal regularizer introduced in 2011. Um, this regularizer um, penalizes the um, various metric called prejudice index. And this is the um, mutual information between the sensitive attribute and the predict, um, prediction result. And this is, um, this is organized as like this. And another example is um, Bechstein one dis distant distance regularizer um, suggested in 2020. This um, this term penalizes the uh, Bechstein one distance while minimizing uh, the logistic regression loss. So, uh, so in the paper the uh, oh, um, the author uses the, uh, the term on the left, um, the linear, com linear combination of the original loss function and the uh, Bessel's time one loss function. And Bessel's time loss function is um, uh, a metric to uh, measure the distance between two different uh, probability distributions. <coughs> Next, um, next one is the constraint optimization method. Um, it is uh, different from uh, regularization method. It, um, instead of using adding regular pressure, it, uh, it uh, converts it to an uh, optimization con constraint like this. And one example is the um, flexible approach published in 2019. And here, um, the author adds a constraint to minimize the covariance between a sensitive attribute and the assigned distance of feature vector from decision boundary um, in order to uh, improve the disparate impact. Disparate impact metric. So uh, if you look at the uh, this equation, the a small j3 is the sensitive attribute, and um, g theta is the assigned distance. So, so by okay, yeah. can I, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, in your previous slide, you had um, a method showing um, 
So I'm minimizing, yes, the first one, added regularizer, uh, that first line, this equation and the next page, isn't it the same? Here, if you make omega equal to r, you minimize your loss function and the uh, regularizer, L, uh, L2 regularizer, and you have a constraint. Isn't this the same as the first line in the previous uh, slide? The, uh, they are fundamentally um, trying the same uh, results. Uh, but I think one difference is that in the first expression, the, uh, the R, uh, the regular R term uh, will, uh, will be we will continue to decrease uh, during the training, but uh, in the second, uh, second one, um, it, it only uh, constrains its value. So um, I think there is maybe some uh, difference in uh, the approach. Um, I, uh, uh, yes. uh, I think they are the same thing. If you um, you need to do a little bit more research, and you will find that this formulation and the previous formulation are exactly the same. Please, uh, 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 I want you to uh, uh, verify this and let everybody know. Okay. Can I have a question? So I'm suggesting, I'm suggesting that the first line here, on this slide, and the uh, formulation that you show in the next slide are exactly duplicate when R and omega, if R and omega are the same. Okay. Can you verify that for me uh, after uh, the, your set, your wonderful seminar? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So I have a question. So yes. what is the sensitive attribute and where is it come from? Is it from the the feature? Is it one feature of the input? Uh, or some way and how can we we get the sensitive attribute in the data set? Uh, so uh, usually sensitive attributes mean the uh, identity uh, attributes. Uh, for example, uh, people's gender, age, or uh, region, so so that um, just that uh, the people should should not be treated differently according to uh, those attributes. So uh, this is why and why we usually call it sensitive attribute. So sensitive attribute is a feature of input. Is that correct? Uh, it doesn't mean all the features, but. Uh, Sensitive uh, the attributes uh, with respect uh, of which uh, uh, the people should be fairly uh, fairly interested. So okay, so for example, when we give an input image, when we give an input image, how can I identify the sensitive attribute of that image? Excellent. Okay, then for example, uh, the labels are given. Uh, Metadata is given, then um, people's um, age or gender, uh, such information is given, then we can set as uh, then any of them as sensitive attribute. And but there is also the cases uh, where the sensitive attributes are not given. And in those cases, there are also algorithms to, uh, to mitigate the unfairness issue yeah, with, with respect to that. Okay, so you you mean that we have uh, compared to uh, original uh, classification setting, so we have the input image, and we have some another meta data data yes. meta data data, and then we we have some kind of uh, label about the sensitive attribute in that meta data, yes. and then we input the 
uh, image and also the meta data into the a model for classify uh, uh, for predict the output, right? Uh, we uh, we don't always uh, it's not necessary to put the sensitive attributes as input. So uh, one commonly used method is uh, just uh, let the model as it is okay, with no with no sensitive entropy as input and during uh, training or um, after training uh, the, the modification of um, the modification of results or uh, variable variables of with uh, to the, the sensitive entropy. So uh, in that case if you don't use the metadata as input, how can you you relay the regularization which relates to the third type because third type is not related to the, the sensitive attribute. Uh, actually, right? uh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, the sensitive attribute is not, not input to the model, but it may be input to the whole algorithm. Uh, so, I mean, uh, the data set contains the information of sensitive um, attributes. Um, however, however, the uh, this learning model um, um, it may not uh, um, get the sensitive attribute as the input. Uh, okay, thank you. Yes. So, um, yes. Can I make a comment here? Okay. So, uh, very good question. Uh, as um, this. Okay. So, first of all. Okay, let me just ask, uh, uh, try to answer uh, Tang's question. Uh, sensitive attribute, uh, let's say, I, I, I guess, uh, Tao gave good examples. Uh, uh, if this was uh, about person, uh, then maybe gender, uh, age, and uh, various characteristics about the different groups. Okay, so you're dividing up the population into groups, okay? With groups, you, you have a, a loss for the group, that's L, okay? And there is a parameter that's associated with some prediction, uh, uh, and that's uh, the parameter theta. You're trying to predict, the, you're trying to make the prediction, but R would be uh, the different groups, the gr groups, uh, how, you know, in the population, you could divide up the group in any way you want. And that group information can or cannot, uh, may not be uh, explicit. It may be implicit. Or, you know, it's uh, not known. Okay? And there are various ways. Uh, yes. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, yes. Yes. So, uh, thank you okay. for your information. And so the, uh, the, the, so here there is no form, There's nothing about uh, feature here. There's no feature. D is about the distribution of the data. Okay. It's the uh, it's the distribution about the population. Okay. It's about the population. Uh, and yes. theta is a parameter in your prediction. Okay. Yes. The middle term is uh, some uh, constraint on your theta, okay? Yes. And of course, you could write it, uh, and R is some constraint on your uh, the, the, the population. And you can state it by one of the, uh, uh, the constraint fairness measure that uh, uh, Dayok has mentioned. Okay, then R can be any one of those things. Uh, I see, I see. Thank you uh, for your... Okay, it can be, R can be anything uh, about the distribution. And these things, the S, S um, is, uh, you know, uh, is an explicit group about, about the group, characteristic about the group, but um, it, uh, the label might not be given. You know, you, you might have data where S is not known, okay? Uh, yes. Thank now, you. 
I want everybody to understand that you know this is a wonderful, uh, wonderful presentation by the help and it says fairness, but um, you know people should uh, realize this is not just about person, but this can be about a situation. Let's say, and uh, let me give you an example. You're doing, trying to do um, uh, object classification, okay? Object classification, and L may be some uh, CTC, okay? And uh, the theta might be the, uh, uh, the, the weights for the prediction, and R can be some form of what example might be, you want to do classification equally well in both lighting situation. When it's bright and when it's dark. So R can be about, you know, it's two groups, situation. It, it, you can divide up the situation when it's bright and uh, when it's dark. So S, the sensitive attribute, would be the lighting condition. And so what you are trying to obtain with R, or any of these things, is robustness. This fairness is just equal to robustness. So if you have two difficult situation, Okay, maybe under noise and under clean situation, or you may have different you know scenarios, and you may want to have uh, equal performance <coughs> under two different situations. Did everybody understand that? My example. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, so Dayok has uh, you know uh, uh, you know, presented this in a very classical, traditional way, saying that the sensitive attribute may be about you know, gender, about age, about educational level, you know, about race, black and white, about Korean and Vietnamese. He, 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 he presented that in terms of person's characteristic. But this can be about situation, just any situation, about the population, uh, you know. So uh, you may say, oh, this is not about, uh, you know, I'm doing multimedia, I'm doing some classification, and uh, this is not related to me. This relates to everybody. This is about robustness. Did everybody understand that? Can you say that yes or no? Or uh, I still have difficulty? Uso, did you understand what I said? Yeah, I understand. Hisok uh, and Hisok? Yeah, I understand. Time? Yes, I understand that. Chum? Yeah, yes. Okay, Joshua? Uh, yes. Okay, so, uh, you know, this can be applied for a wide situation, very, you know, and also, okay, so, and also, this is, you know, this first, uh, first uh, equation right here, uh, this can be stated in this way, you know, can you verify this, okay, and I, 100% sure this statement can be rewritten as minimizing the loss function such that theta, uh, the L2 norm theta, uh, LT norm of theta is less than some epsilon and R is less than some delta.
progress. <웃음> 어, 여기 또 되네. 내 사진이 어, 내가 뭘 잘못 누른 거 같네. 아, 제가 그 AI 그 네. AI 어소시에이션 그 계정으로 했는데 네. 갑자기 중상이 돼가지고 이유 잘 모르겠어. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, I want to verify. It, okay, this is very important. Okay, listen to me again. The first line. This formulation, this uh, this minimization, is the same as minimizing L such that the two norm of theta is less than epsilon and R is less than some delta. Okay, and Dale's going to verify this. Okay, and let's move on. Uh, did, uh, did I answer your question, Tang? Yes. Okay, let's move on. So, so for this, the second equation right here, minimizing L here, subject to that and that, is can be written in one line. Minimizing L plus some lambda 1, n over 1, summation, blah, 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 plus epsilon. And I think you need to do uh, some uh, switching. And you can also do that lambda 2, uh, n over 1, uh, blah, 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 on this one. Or some way, uh, you could rearrange this, I think. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Thank you very much. So, uh, let me continue. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is an um, example of implicit method, uh, the contrasted learning method. Um, this is an um, uh, individual level implicit variance method. And here, the, we have positive and negative samples, uh, x plus and x minus. Uh, they have uh, different sensitive attributes, but uh, have the same or uh, similar non-sensitive attributes. And um, we pursue the fairness by um, minimizing the dis dissimilarity between uh, those positive and negative samples, so that um, represent represent like, re representations are independent of the sensitive attributes. So here, okay, can I just make another comment? Sorry about this. So with contrasted learning, uh, yes, uh, so again, uh, 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 same situation. So you have, uh, let's say, uh, some object in bright light, bright light um, and then you have 
uh, in the darkness. So X plus will be bright light, X minus is uh, uh, dark light, okay? And you encode it, and you want the result to be something similar. And that will be uh, fair against, so fairness against all bright lights. So your prediction result will be the same, will be very close to one another, whether it's bright or whether it's dark. Isn't this wonderful? I mean, this is, um, I, I think, the, you know, people should understand this. Okay, let's go. Thank you very much. One application of constructive learning for fair classification is a model called fair field, um, subject, um, published in 2021. And this is a method, a fairness method applied to uh, text encoders, uh, the pre-trained text encoders. And here um, we have um, X, the sentences, and WP, the uh, sensitive word uh, such as uh, male or um, female and young. Uh, these are um, something, some words that can be sensitive. And um, we have a pre trained encoder uh, denoted by RG. Uh, in this paper, you, uh, a bird model is used. And um, the small c is the original representation obtained by the um, BERT and um, to make the representation uh, more uh, better, better, we add a um, fair, fair filter uh, denoted by small f after, after c and uh, this is simply a fully connected layer and we obtain the final um, fair, fair modified representation B, so that, um, uh, it is obtained by minimizing the loss um, um, written um, in the middle of uh, this, this way. So uh, we minimize uh, this loss function so that the info NC estimator is maximized while um, the, the CRUB um, which is the uh, upper bound for mutual information um, between the uh, word in, sensitive word embedding and a uh, sentence embedding. And uh, so uh, by minimizing this um, word testing objective, we obtain a um, fair representation, a uh, fair sentence representation. And uh, here, um, a fair metric called uh, SBAT, uh, so short term for sentence encoder association test, is, 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 which is the uh, extended version of uh, WEAT, uh, which is a uh, word encoder association test. And here, um, we have a We have a um, that x the uh, sensitive um, some, some set of sensitive words such as um, male or female and a large a two, so another uh, attributes that a and b which are the words that, that are um, not related to uh, the previous sensitive words such as. Um, for example, the set A may be um, the set of words like young or old. Set B may be the um, set of words like rich and poor. And uh, by measuring the uh, difference between the percent, um, the mean cosine uh, values between the and this word, and comparing across different attributes, we uh, measure the uh, fairness measure of um, 
minimizing the visual information between the um, sensitive part and sensitive, sensitive part and the other part. And um, this uh, this approach is um, proved, proved useful uh, when the uh, sensitive attribute uh, we know the sensitive attribute, but even in the case of uh, where uh, we don't know the sensitive attribute it is it, uh, just ob observed to improve the fairness and because it uh, um, by uh, making the elements independent of each other it uh, decoder uh, reduces the correlation between uh, uh, sensitive part and um, not divided part. And finally, the adversary learning is used for uh, fairness. Uh, this is also a group level increase method. And um, we have a um, adversary network, uh, AP, uh, which predicts the sensitive attribute uh, from uh, the obtained representation. And um, in, this in this method, the, uh, the loss function is original loss function is minimized and also the uh, adversarial adversary loss is also uh, minimized and um, the equations are like this for, um, for prediction layer devising we minimize uh, we minimize the original loss function and uh, maximize the adversarial loss and for hidden layer devising we add a um, reconstruction <coughs> loss example of this uh, approach is adversarial um, um, training applied to um, word, in, word embeddings in 2020. And in this paper, they use uh, this kind of um, this kind of uh, gradient uh, where LP is the um, loss function for word embedding, original word, word embedding and the modified word embedding and LA is the loss function for uh, adversary uh, network that uh, which predicts the sensitive attribute and uh, it predicts the um, sentiment 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 of the visual uh, and the protection term is used to uh, prevent the uh, the other parts of the gradient uh, moving favorable to, uh, to the adversary, adversary network. So it, um, it, uh, it, it tries to um, improve the um, prediction accuracy while um, removing the um, sentiment, sentiment information for the working. 
them. <coughs> to summarize uh, today's um, presentation, first, uh, first of all, fairness is an important area of AI, and there are many various criteria which are necessary compatible to each other. And um, there were methods, methods in classific, uh, methods for fair classification are uh, there are three types, pre-processing, pre in-processing, and post-processing. And for in-processing methods, we have um, uh, <coughs> explored uh, explicit and implicit methods. <coughs> and and this, uh, this is the reference. And, uh, thank you. And um, if you have any questions, I'm still free to ask. Okay, let me just make some comments. Uh, that was a wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, I think uh, for students who are seeing this for the first time, may have a little bit of uh, difficulty understanding what this is about. Uh, uh, so let me just uh, go to the uh, natural language slide. Maybe there is, uh, okay, so I think, uh, you know, please uh, correct me, uh, Gail, if I'm uh, wrong. Uh, here, what you're, let's say, uh, you want to have a sentence. So uh, the trend these days is to not do word embedding, but also sentence embedding. Okay, you want to vectorize uh, the sentence. And, uh, uh, you want to, in this, in, here, you want to have a sentence that is uh, not gender biased, meaning that um, uh, he must, uh, he is a smart person, or but this is probably not right. Um, uh, he, uh, he is a, uh, a person, uh, he who studies, let's just say, it, he who studies hard uh, will succeed in life. So I use the word he, okay? Now, you can, uh, that may be uh, sensitive to gender, meaning that maybe that refers only to male. So you want, uh, you want, even though you have a sentence that starts with he, you know, but he who, star, who studies hard will succeed in life. But you also mean uh, she, it could be she. So, um, if you want that, and you want to embed your sentence, he who studies hard will succeed in life, to be gender, uh, agnostic or you know not gender biased then you would use something like this is this right Dale? Uh, yes um actually this um let me um change both so uh, his paper you just uh generate um some kind of augmentation um like this so the sensitive word is, uh, for example, he, then uh, they modify uh, he to she and his to her, so that um, when, uh, even though the gender information changes, the, the model treats uh, these two sentences equally. Yes. So this is, uh, you know, is, is that, that's what you're trying to do. Maybe, you know, in uh, a company policy or government policy, uh, you want to be uh, gender neutral or race neutral, then uh, you would use something like this so that uh, you are not uh, uh, race or gender uh, biased. That's what this is about, okay, I think. And the next next one, let's have a look at the next one. So, oh, no, 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 the previous one. Yeah, this one. 
So you are trying to encode x1 in some way and uh, to get your uh, representation z and um, while you're doing this, you have you have created uh, some uh, latent variable or intermediate variable, or or maybe it's um, a variable that's uh, uh, implicit in making u, and this u has to be uh, there are a couple of u's, so, you know, different for different groups. You may have u one, u i, and u j, and you want that u i and u j to be um, independent, so that uh, you know uh, what you're doing is here is you're making it fair based on u. So you you while you're getting z. You you are uh, you are constraining that the use uh, are uh, you know it doesn't matter what you are whether you have u i or u j I think that's what this is trying to say is that right yes. And uh, you want to get some representation of this person's uh, characteristic that gives you Z. And maybe from that characteristic, you can uh, you can derive the gender. Uh, maybe U I and U J from uh, some for female and male, or some attributes. Maybe that's not, uh, it's not a good, good example. But you want those attributes to be independent. Or it, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, you're saying that it doesn't matter whether it's you. you know, these things, two are not tied. I don't think this is a good example, yes. But uh, yeah, uh, so uh, Dale, it would be nice to have some explicit examples so that people understand this. Okay? Um, so, you know, you've done a good job of presenting. Can you update the slide to include some explicit examples of what this is doing? Okay? Rather than, you know, going, you know, going into the mathematical uh, details so that you can have a better understanding of this. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. Please do that for you know uh, all the three last uh, uh, slides. Okay. And uh, when you also uh, uh, say that this is probably some paper, right? And the last one is some paper. Uh, we would like to know who the author is and what the um, what conference this? These things were uh, pub published, and I would like uh, to be uh, explicitly shown in the slides. So let's say for the language, which one? Where, where was it published? So the paper is the. Is it a journal? Uh, this is uh, not a journal, but it's archive print. And I cannot see. Yes. Where is it? Uh, okay. This is the yeah, paper. Oh, the paper, but it's triple AI. Right. Okay, so that's a triple AI paper. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, in future, uh, people who are presenting 
it would be nice to have with, uh, to uh, you know show which conference and which year it was uh, published. Okay, that's uh, it for me. Uh, uh, and uh, you can other students can ask. <laughs> I would also like to say that this counterfactual, counterfactual, so let's say you do the classification under bright light, the counterfactual will be dark light. If it was dark light, what would you get? And I, um, uh, I'd like to say that when you do counterfactual, you need to have, in, in many cases, a causal graph. Meaning that when, um, so you have an image that is uh, shown in the bright light. Now when, you, when it's dark, so the light, lighting is dark, then the dark light causes um, everything to appear dark. Okay, so you need to have, so that's a, a causal, simple causal graph. But, you know, based on this causal graph, you need to change these things. And, um, you know, uh, based on counterfactual, uh, you know, uh, your processes uh, based on this, uh, you know, causal graph. If, if the light goes dark, then what happens to the effect? Okay, let's uh, give it a hand for uh, Ada and uh, please. Uh, no. What I said, verify for me that those two are the same. Also, update the slide. Okay. And you can also update, uh, please load this video into our YouTube. So who is in charge of putting this video?